Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've got a fun one today because a couple of days ago on one of my weekly wrap-up videos for subscribers, I talked about a project I wanted to do where I could sync save game files from emulators between my Android devices. So I have here uh, my GPD XD that I bought a few months ago and I'm playing a Sega Genesis game on it. This is Ghouls and Ghosts. And uh, what I wanted to do is figure out a way where uh, I could play a game on the handheld, uh, quit and save the state, and then have it transfer over to something like my NVIDIA Shield TV uh, because they're running the same emulator. Just one runs on a TV, uh, the other one is in a handheld form, but they're both running Android, same operating system, same emulator, and theoretically those save game files should just load up on both. Now, of course, I could uh, copy them to cards and just kind of sneaker net them uh, back and forth. That's our old term of uh, copying files. Uh, but I really wanted to do something that was more automatic. And uh, as you all know, we had Synology on the channel as a sponsor last week. They're not sponsoring this video, but one of the tools they have is part of their network attached storage devices really works well for this. It's called a DS Cloud. And what happens is it works just like Dropbox, except you own all the equipment to make it work. And what happens is anytime I save files to a specific folder on this device, whether they're save game states or anything, uh, they synchronize down to the NAS device downstairs. And then all the other Android devices that are also on uh, that DS uh, Cloud application will get those files synced up with them. So this NVIDIA Shield here uh, will get that save game state and then when I load up the emulator again I can pick up my game exactly where I left off. So I, I have actually two NVIDIA shields on two different televisions in two different parts of the house along with this handheld and I can basically uh, keep my game going on all three uh, basically passing off from one to the other so I'm never uh, having to replay anything which was my objective here. I don't have a lot of time anymore in my life here so it's nice to be able to uh, do this very quickly. Now before we go over to the shield I want to show you how to set this up. So what I've done here uh, I selected a new share on my cloud station called Android Sync and I assigned my username to it and I enabled it and I also had it keep uh, 32 versions of the files that I'm working on. So every time I save a state, uh, it's going to keep the new copy but also 32 versions of prior copies too. So you always have some way to step back in case uh, maybe you save something accidentally and don't want to uh, have the current state be the current state. You can just go back uh, with the versioning feature on here. So uh, very easy to get it set up. I covered this feature in depth in an original video I did uh, probably about a year or two ago, which I'll link to above so you can get an exact feel as to how it works with your computers and everything else. Uh, but today we're just focusing on some gaming. So let's go over to our NVIDIA Shield TV now and set this up. Now one of the things that you have to do is grab the APK file uh, directly from Synology's website, uh, which is nice because they do put their APKs up for download because you can't install this DS uh, cloud application from the Google Play Store on an Android TV at the moment. So you have to put it in uh, through a sideloading method. And by the way, I did a video about sideloading apps on here too, so you can check that one out as well if you want to learn how to get that app on there. Uh, so I'm going to load up the sideload launcher, which I did cover in that video. And this gives you access to the apps that don't show up uh, in the Android TV interface. So right here, we're in the Android TV interface. If I go in here, uh, we go to the sideload interface where there are other apps that uh, you can run that aren't available on the other interface. So I'll load up my uh, thing here. I've already logged into my uh, device and what I'm going to do is just go over to my Android sync folder here and just select that one to be uh, used. I do have a keyboard and trackpad set up right now just to make this a little bit easier but I've selected the Android sync folder. This is what I'm using to store those save game state files. Now before you click on the checkbox here what you need to do is click on the internal storage first because I'm going to make a folder uh, for syncing these things up. So I'm going to call this retro here and I'll click on yes and uh, this is going to be the folder that we're going to use to store all of the synced game files. So I'm going to click next and now you can see here it says local path is storage emulated zero retro. That's going to be important for when we go over to our emulator in a minute. I'm going to select sync subfolders because at some point I'm probably going to do that. Uh, you can just select all these uh, checkboxes here. You do have the ability to limit what kind of files that it does sync up if you want to just have certain files come over. But in this case, uh, we have other formats. So I'm just going to have that one uh, be selected. You can also set a max file size for synchronization. Uh, but for our purposes, we're not going to be using very large files. But of course, we could set this larger if we want just to be safe. 
and we'll scroll down here to the bottom just to make sure there's nothing else to look at. I'll click on OK. Uh, you can also have it uh, sync on Wi-Fi only. This is probably more important if you're dealing with a portable device like a phone or like our little GPD tablet. Uh, probably not as important with something that's always on your network, but you can make uh, the decision there. What will happen is, is it'll bank up any changes that happen when it's not on the network. So if you take this thing, uh, go off site with it, and then come back later, the changes will get pushed back uh, once the uh, device finds that it's on your local network again. There are ways to get at this from the outside, but uh, in this case, we're only going to be doing it while we're on our network. So I'm just going to disable this just because it's not relevant to our uh, particular need here. Uh, background sync dis uh, disabling would be helpful if you have a very low memory device or you're seeing some issues. Uh, this will run in the background on the device, so it's very seamless. You don't have to boot it up and force a sync. Uh, but if you're noticing some issues with it, uh, you can disable background sync and then just push updates over normally. I found it doesn't use up much CPU and it does occupy about 100 megabytes of memory or so, uh, but on most two or three gigabyte devices like the NVIDIA Shield and our GPD here, it's not too much of an issue, but if you're seeing issues, you can disable that and force the updates manually versus automatically. And we'll click on done here and uh, we'll wait for that to get uh, set up. And I think we're good to go here. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is just back out and go back to our main menu. I'm going to boot up the md.emu emulator and we have to tell it where these save game files are going to be located. So I'm going to go over to options now. I'm going to go over to system and then I'm going to scroll down to uh, the path for the save games. And I'm just going to go right here to save path and I'm going to set a custom path and we're going to go uh, browse through our Android uh, device here and find it here. So give me one second while we locate uh, the location of that. And uh, once we find our retro folder, there it is, uh, we'll put that as uh, the current uh, directory here. And uh, what I'll do now is just uh, click on the little check mark here in the corner. And when we do that, uh, what should happen now is uh, our game should be right where we left it. So I'm going to go over to recent games and uh, just load up our ghouls and ghosts here, or load games. And I'm going to click on that. And now we see that there's an autosave here. I'm going to click continue. And you can see we are exactly where we left off before. So I'll unpause the game here. And there we go. So I'm going to move over here a little bit, uh, maybe get uh, a little bit further in the game. And then uh, once I uh, get myself into a safer spot here, I'm going to exit the game again. And what that will do is create another file. Uh, that one now is going to sync back to the NAS drive downstairs and then sync over to my GPD handheld here. When we load this up again, we should be now where we left off on the shield. So let's take a look and see if that's what happened. All right, so let's have a look here. I'm going to go over to my md.emu application here. We'll go back to our recent games. I'll go over to our ghouls and ghosts here. And if I uh, click on continue, we should be left off right where we were in the safer spot. So you can see uh, just exactly how this works. We've got a save state uh, that we're passing back and forth uh, over this DS cloud thing. And it's actually working pretty well. I have found that there is sometimes a little bit of a delay between the time that you save something and something may carry over. Uh, so you may want to give it a minute or two before you hop over to the next device. Uh, but it does seem to be working pretty well. Now, what happens if something gets screwed up? Well, that versioning feature can really help. And I'll show you how that works on the server side of this equation. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look and see how that versioning works. And we are back in my web-based control panel on the Synology NAS. I clicked on version history in our cloud station server. The folder is Android Sync, which is the folder that is located on the Synology drive downstairs. So anything that goes into that folder or changes in that folder automatically syncs up to all of the devices that are currently attached to it. Uh, that being my uh, GPD XD and the two NVIDIA Shield uh, devices. And you'll see here on Ghouls and Ghosts that we have 18 versions of that save state file. And if I click on it and then go over to uh, browse previous versions, I can see every time that file has changed and which device changed it. And even better, I can go in and actually restore a file uh, if something bad happens. So you'll see this one here that says localhost. What happened earlier, I had a bad take. I had a, a setting on the, sh on the XD here that was saving the save state every time I left the game. And I wanted to redo the take, but this thing overwrote the save file, which then got synced back up to everything else in the house. So I was able to go back to the last time the Android TV made the change, restore that file, and then everything got corrected again. So this is almost like a backup mechanism, which might be really helpful, especially if you have uh, save states triggered to a button and you overwrote something that you didn't want to. Uh, you can go right into your control panel here, uh, restore that, and get that better save state back to everything else on your network. So that was pretty handy there. So the delay isn't too bad uh, between the time that you make a change and when it gets up to all the other devices. Uh, I found it's, it's the 
right length that if I switch from the handheld, you know, basically turn this thing off after I'm done uh, syncing it, uh, going over to the television, usually the file is there, usually within 10 to 15 seconds or so if I'm on my local network. Um, your mileage might vary, so you may want to just double check and make sure everything uh, synced up properly. But so far, I've been playing with this now for a day and a half. Uh, it's been working really well, and I've got that uh, fallback of the revision history on the device if I uh, need to make some changes. And one thing, though, to keep in mind is that the emulator you're running on your box uh, needs to have the ability to point its save states to a directory that you specify. So you saw what we did on uh, the md.emu app earlier where we told it where to put its save state files. That folder is the one that's syncing up with all the other devices. It has to go in there for this to work. So uh, you may need to make sure that your, your favorite emulator does that. Most do, uh, but if it doesn't, you'll have to come up with some other way to point uh, this DS cloud application at the folder the emulator uses uh, to make all of that work. So this worked really well. I know a lot of you had written in with some suggestions for me. Uh, this was the first thing I tried and it worked so great. I'm pretty much done playing around with it because this is exactly what I wanted. But uh, do leave me some comments down below on some other things that people could use if they don't want to go out and buy a Synology NAS to make this work. There's undoubtedly other ways to do it. Uh, so definitely leave some suggestions down below for some other folks to follow uh, to kind of replicate what we just did here because folder replication is not uh, terribly complex for uh, apps that specialize in this kind of thing and there might be easier and cheaper ways to do it. Uh, this is the one that worked for me. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Shabib. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.